What's happening there everybody? Brandon here again. So this one was a bit of an adventure uh, to say the least. It was uh, my first attempt at a Christmas tree in this style so uh, it was a bit of a trial and error deal for sure. I uh, pretty much went through a, a, a whole process of a tree that I scrapped and started over. So to check out the video of my process of this, let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what's happening there everybody Brandon here hanging out in the studio so right now it is mid-July which here in the southeast US means it is on the mega hot outside um, and so something kind of weird that goes on in July apparently is Christmas in July right uh, my wife's been sitting around watching Hallmark Christmas movies part of their Christmas in July thing that they're doing and there's Christmas in July on QVC all kinds of nonsense so I have decided from that inspiration here in July that I am going to paint a Christmas tree um, and it's going to be kind of a nighttime scene Christmas tree so I am going to paint one in the snow at night uh, maybe a little bit of a blue glow to the sky in the background and um, it's going to be on a 16 by 20 canvas and we're going to paint it with white lights this time go with a classic look of white lights um, on a nighttime Christmas tree and we're going to see how this turns out I've done a really tiny one in a painting that I did of a log cabin in the snow um, about a year ago maybe but this is going to be a bigger 16 by 20 that I'm going to do on a Christmas tree from my Christmas in July inspiration so it's going to mix it up a little bit. I've been doing, you know, birds and uh, some landscape scenes of some other types here lately. This is going to be mixing it up a little bit, just trying to keep it <laughs> fresh, keep it different. So we're going to we're going to do that. We have a white canvas at the moment. I think doing a night scene on this Christmas tree that I want to start with an all black canvas uh, just to make the the look of the sky and the snow on the ground everything the way that I want it to look so I'm going to paint this whole thing first with some black gesso cover this canvas and then we will get started from there okay so what we have now is a 16 by 20 canvas here that I have covered completely with some black gesso and now the idea here is to create a scene that is at night uh, with a Christmas tree in it. It's going to be a prominent foreground Christmas tree that's going to take up the bulk of the canvas. So I'm going to have a little bit of a light um, glow in the sky here, a bluish kind of glow in the sky in the back. Some kind of distant tree line through there that's going to not have any detail to it really at all and then snow along the ground and the tree in the foreground so basically somewhere in the middle here I'm going to create a tree line and then the Christmas tree itself is going to be pretty much the main attraction so it's going to be big extend from the top down here to the bottom probably somewhere in this vicinity and then we'll have some snow along the ground uh, my tree line is probably going to be somewhere right in there to somewhere right in there so that is where we are headed we are going to attempt to do this background in acrylics um, I don't know if the acrylics are going to do what I want in terms of being able to fade a color where it's darker in the corners I may have to do that sky in the back in oil paints um, I'll start with the acrylics and see how it works pretty sure that everything else I'm going to be able to do in acrylics I'd like to do the whole thing in acrylics but if the sky color is not working out the way I want it to work out I will do the sky in oil paints just to create the fade the way I want and we'll do the rest of it in acrylics so we're going to get started with that now 
Okay, so I sprayed a little bit of water up here um, to maybe help some of these acrylics move around. I'm also going to try using this sponge brush, which I have never used before and I have no idea if this is going to work. But I'm thinking that this will hold a little bit of the water a little better for a little longer period of time. And so it might help me um, achieve this sky fade in the colors with these blues a little better than a brush would. But we are about to find out because, like I said, I've never used this thing before. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna see what it does. All right, now I'm putting this on pretty thin, pretty watery. Uh, this is just some some blue. And really all I'm looking to do at this moment is to get some of this blue in here on top of this black canvas and see how it's going to behave when I try to fade some other color in with it. Now down here along this edge I'm going to lighten this blue up. And it's still pretty thin and watery at this point. And I basically just want to see how this is going to react. And what it's going to do when I put this stuff on the canvas with this brush and keep it pretty thin. Alright, so for now I think I'm going to let that, I'm going to let that dry and see what kind of See what kind of look it gives me when it's dry, what kind of values we get there in terms of the tones and the lightness and darkness of those blues and see what it looks like and then find out if I can come back on with some more acrylics and make that look the way I want or not. <laughs> While it's drying though, I guess I will go ahead and come down here and lay in about where some snow is going to be and just keep using this sponge for the time being This snow in the distance back there is going to be quite dark, obviously. Very dark bluish kind of color to it as well. Uh, and this doesn't have to be perfect, obviously, because this is just a base layer going in. I'll come back with brushes and make any kind of adjustments that are going to be, need to be made. So I'm just going to lay it in here just to get an idea of where we're headed. While I'm doing this here, I'm creating some areas where the color is a little bit lighter than others. So you see these areas in here and that will ultimately help me to sit back and gauge the overall composition of this snow and what I want it to look like once I officially get started on it. But to have some lighter and darker areas mixed in there will start to give me a feel and an idea for where I'm going to create some some shadows and some highlights and some of the you know the, the hills and undulations of the land with the snow back there and then all of the area around where the tree is going to be is actually going to be um, reflecting in, in, uh, the Christmas lights themselves and, and lit up fairly well so um, that area will end up looking totally different once it comes time to put the Christmas tree lights and reflections in. So right now I'm just going to be putting the dark the dark base underneath it for the most part. And since I already had this sponge brush in my hand, we're just going to keep on using that. Because it really doesn't make any difference for this base layer, obviously. 
gonna let this dry a few minutes again it is acrylic so it won't take long it'll take maybe five minutes really for this to kind of dry in and see where we stand after that and then make a decision on if i can come that's actually fairly dry there now i have to make a decision on whether or not i can pull this sky off with acrylics or if i'm gonna have to move to oil paints to get that done so we shall see All right, so a couple of things that I determined uh, while my camera battery had died for a few minutes. One, there was a pretty bad glare up in here on the top of this painting from just the colors we're using and the lights in here. So I've tried to turn it the best I can for the camera. So there's still some glare in there, um, but it's about as good as I can get at this point. The other thing I determined is the best way to, to get the fade in these blues that I'm looking for is to use a, a lot of paint so it takes longer to dry. So the best way to blend those acrylics is when they're still wet. So by using a lot of paint and working quickly, I can, I can at least achieve a pretty decent fade with it. Now there's probably some mediums out there that you can use with acrylics that will slow down that drying time. And I'll have to do some digging into that because I honestly don't know right now off the top of my head. Uh, so if you know something that works good, you can drop that in the comments there and I can have a look. But I'll do some research on that and figure out what mediums I can use to increase my drying to, or decrease I should say um, the drying time there uh, or make them slower anyway and um, that way I can blend those acrylics a little bit better so we're gonna come back in here now this is dried and put in more of this little bit lighter blue color up through here so I can make that fade come up a little higher and try to work that fade somewhere in the middle of that sky back there so that's what we're gonna get started on now and also this lighter blue color dries a good bit darker than what it appears when it's wet when it's going on so it's going to look a lot lighter as i'm sticking it on here but it will dry uh, much darker once it's done okay so while the sky up here is drying because obviously you can see where it's still wet it's a fair bit lighter in blue than the rest so that's going to have to take a few more minutes to be drying while that's going on i'm going to go ahead and get started down here on the snow part of it um, i'm probably going to start the tree line the distance somewhere around here so i'm just going to work on the snow from about there down and then this area of the snow in here is going to be reflecting a, a bunch of light from the Christmas tree I'm going to put in there so there's going to be and I need to pretty much paint all that in first so I can lay the tree on top of it so when I get up into this foreground area in here there's going to be a lot of light reflection off the snow going on so there's like a glow happening in this area that's not going to really be happening back there in the distance on the snow so Alright, so now I'm going to come in here and start laying in a little bit of the foundation of the highlights of the Christmas tree lights onto the snow in this area. This is going to be like a dug out area around the tree itself where the snow hadn't packed down into. And so I'm going to create the reflections off the snow from the lights. Um, and this is basically just another blocking in layer. So I'm going to have to come back and refine this, but I'm just going to start laying in the highlighted colors because I got to get the the highlights behind the tree put in first before I can stick the tree in itself. So we're going to start doing that now and we're basically just going to use some uh, some different tones of yellows and um, uh, you know lights uh, that would be reflecting from white Christmas tree lights onto snow. So we're going to continue using blues and purples and the shadows and then more white and, and yellow into the highlighted areas. This distant tree line back here I'm basically just using a lot of dark blue a little touch of black in there and I'm just using different angles of this brush here corners of it pieces of it to just touch in real distant tree line on the top most of this in here is going to be covered by the foreground Christmas tree obviously so I'm not too concerned about what's directly in the middle of the picture
Okay, so I'm at a point now where I think I'm going to go ahead and lay in at least the darker background tones of my Christmas tree so I can get it in the picture here. And then I can worry about finishing all the other details of the highlights and everything once I get it laid in here. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the background dark, real dark greens of the limbs through here. Then it's going to create my contrast for my brighter highlights. Once I get it in place and start to work on that, I think I'll get a better feel for what I want to do in terms of the reflections on the snow down here and how I want it to all look. So we're going to start on that tree now. Okay, so I think that now that I'm going to start working on the detail of this tree that I actually want to go ahead and put in the location of where all my little Christmas lights are going to be first. Alright, now what that does for me is it gives me some areas that I can concentrate on putting in the, the glow of the lights and the highlights around on the branches in each of these areas helps narrow down exactly what I'm trying to do on each limb. So I'm just going to come in with some lighter um, shades of kind of a green yellow mix um, with some white in it and put the highlights around each one of these limbs and then we'll end up coming back in with some snow on some of these limbs too. So we're just going to keep working on that. Okay, well having let this sit for a little while for everything to dry and to step back and take a look at it, um, I'm not entirely sure that I am completely satisfied with the tree in terms of uh, the way it looks right now. It's maybe a little further away from the viewer than I want it to appear and so I don't know if the detail that I want to put into it is going to be achievable at, at its current, um, the way I've painted it now. So I'm going to I'm going to try to come in here and start detailing out all the little highlights in these limbs with individual little brush strokes to look like pine needles and things in there. But if it's not looking the way I want, um, I may literally just have to scrap this attempt on this tree and paint over it and start over. I'll keep moving forward. I'm still not entirely sure if I'm going to scrap it and start over but we'll see um, but I definitely like it better now than I did before so that's a good thing at least um, but that's the point why you do these uh, in the art world they call it a study I had to even look that term up and I was like a study so this is a study of a Christmas tree uh, I wasn't even sure what that meant but pretty much what it just means is a practice run <laughs> from what I gather so this is a practice run of a Christmas tree um, better wise uh, known in the art world as a study of a Christmas tree. So we're learning here as we go and now I'm going to see about doing some work on this snow. See if we can't improve the way it looks and uh, make it look a little more like it's actually sitting on some limbs out there. See what we come up with. Okay, well, after more deliberation um, last night after I finished working on this for a while yesterday, I have determined that even though I was a little happier with the way it was looking and the way things was um, progressing with it after doing some work on it yesterday, that I don't think I will ever be just completely satisfied with the way this particular tree is going to look and how it's going to turn out. So, uh, being that this is a study of a Christmas tree and, and some practice, well, I'm going to chalk that one up as a practice run and I am going to basically scrap this tree and start completely over. Um, I am going to keep everything else that I've got, so I'm just going to come over this whole tree with some dark, some real dark background green color and basically cover it all up and um, start over with a tree that's going to be a good bit closer to the foreground and 
will have more detail in it and the individual limbs will just be larger so you can see more of what's going on and I'm going to put less Christmas lights on it that way I can focus a little bit more on each individual light and getting the detail around it properly so a lot of this is going to get covered up with the uh, tree that limbs grow much closer to the ground I think um, and comes a little closer into the front end of the canvas here and cover all this up so I'm just going to get some dark color green now and basically blob over all this and start over Well, so after all that deliberating and painting an entirely different tree, <clears throat> this is where I have landed after I've covered that one up. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here with uh, some, some of this snow color that's um, kind of halfway between that snow and the shade and a little bit of light on it. And I'm going to try to define out some individual areas where the snow is on limbs in here because that will be the most visible. And uh, once I put some of that snow in here to define out some of these limbs, we will then go about detailing out where the, the lights will go and finishing all the, the highlights on the limbs themselves. So. Well, now I think we might have something that we can actually work with. So I feel a billion times better about where this is headed than what we had up here previously. So I'm going to now come in here where I have put some of the snow on these limbs and um, add in some, some shading on them uh, to make it look a little bit more realistic in terms of the snow on the limbs. That just kind of got me an idea of, of where I wanted to go with it so I'm gonna come back over all that now and add in some highlights on them and then we'll start plunking in some some lights uh, and then worry about adding the the glow effect and the highlights of where those lights will be shining in the areas that we put them then I'll have to come down here and fix this uh, snow underneath the tree a little bit too so we're gonna get moving and uh, put some highlights in on the snow on these limbs okay I think I'm going to get started now putting some of the, the lights some of the white Christmas lights in the tree itself <clears throat> so compared to what I had before I'm gonna go a lot fewer on the lights I'm gonna make the light individual light a lot bigger and then concentrate on the area of glow around that particular light uh, with a lot more detail so hopefully the finished product this time around will be a lot better for me than what I was achieving with my first attempt with the other tree model that I had first so what I'm going to do is put in a central spot for the light itself which is really nothing but some white and some yellow really just to create like a central area so let's say I've got a light right in there now I'm gonna work around that area to create the effects of the glow of that light and that one one there uh, let's put one back in here. Maybe one right in the middle. There. Up here. So like I said, there'll be a lot less actual lights. I get one a little closer to the ground here. But the lights themselves are going to be bigger in size and the intensity of them in terms of where they're shining the, the area that they have an effect on for highlights is going to be a lot bigger what I'm doing now is just giving me an idea of where the central uh, point of 
glow from that light is going to be. And one right there at the top. I think we're going to go with that. Okay, so what I'm continuing to do now is I'm adding highlights of what would be the Christmas lights themselves hitting individual little pine needles and branches and things around where the light is and that area where the light would be glowing and you'd be seeing reflections as they get closer to the light themselves the individual highlights uh, I just brighten the values up um, and then what I'm going to do after I've done that um, I've tested it a little bit here I come back in with a little bit of the kind of pine green color because you would see obviously where a white light is shining you would see some of that green color starting to come uh, in around where that light is hitting so around these individual areas of lights I'm going to come back in with some green um, at the end uh, to add a little bit of the idea that you're seeing some of the color of the tree itself where the light is shining on it Alright, well, so after a lot of back and forth and trial and error and pretty much completely starting over at one point on the tree, uh, this is pretty much where I have arrived. I'm going to call this the finished tree here, this Christmas tree in the snow. Uh, definitely learned a lot on this particular project on how to achieve some results with this. Um, so that's going to help me out moving forward for sure. So this was a bit of a learning curve on this one um, but that's that's where we have arrived um, fairly happy with the end result on that um, we're gonna hopefully improve upon some some technique and some uh, of the the shading and how that uh, ultimately ended up looking there um, on the next attempt <laughs> but anyway um, there is a study of a Christmas tree uh, Christmas in July at this point as it as it happens to be so um, if you liked that one uh, definitely give me a like and subscribe to the channel and we've got some more research and development more trial and error more learning painting going on in the future so check back with me